We live in a world where our social system is old and our language is old and the way we acquire goods and services is outdated. Our cities are detrimental to our health, chaotic, and a tremendous waste of energy and resources. And our politicians don't serve us. But our technology is racing forward. We're trying to adjust to the rapid advances in technology with obsolete, with, excuse me, with obsolete values that no longer serve us in the world that we have today. <clears throat> excuse me. What is needed is a change in our sense of direction and purpose, an alternative vision for a sustainable new world civilization, unlike any in the past. This is what we're presenting here, and we call it the Venus Project. The activist arm was organized by Peter Joseph, and that's called the Zeitgeist Movement. When I refer to sustainability, I'm not referring to sustainability for the banks, the corporations, or our obsolete social system that we live under. By sustainability, I mean the well-being of all people in a new social system that would bring out the best and their highest potential while protecting and preserving the environment. Almost, almost everyone will prefer using science, si excuse me, almost everyone will prefer using scientific means when it comes to surgery. Also, what I'm talking about is the intelligent management of the Earth's resources by using the methods of science, by the methods of science, I'm referring to science applied to the way we live to achieve a more humane society for all. Almost everyone will prefer using scientific means when it comes to surgery, to the building of aircraft, to skyscrapers, to bridges, and automobiles. Over the centuries, we've developed a consensus that when it comes to matters of personal safety, we choose science and technology rather than primitive belief systems or politics because science has been proven to work. <clears throat> then why don't we use scientific scales of performance when it comes to planning our societies our cities, our transportation systems, our agriculture, our health care, and so on. If science has a lot to do with what works, then clearly there's much about today's social and economic system that is not scientific, because things aren't working very well for the majority of the world's people and the environment. If they were, war, poverty, hunger, homelessness, and pollution would have been solved long ago, long ago. Unfortunately, our social structures evolved with no overall global planning or an understanding of what shapes our behavior and if it is not, and, and it is not being considered today. The Venus Project wants to apply an intelligent method of planning for planetary survival. If we don't apply the scientific method to the way we live, unnecessary human suffering will continue. We have the technological ability and the resources to feed everyone on the planet, but we don't have the money to do so. Then how do we even begin to solve our problems within the methods of the monetary system that we all live under. The use of money is hardly ever examined, but let's consider it along with how much it influences our behavior and our values. Money itself does not have any value whatsoever. There's no goal to back it up. It's just a picture on a cheap piece of paper 
with an agreement amongst people as to what it can buy. And I would say a forced agreement because we really don't determine the price of things. If it rained $100 bills, right now, everybody would be happy except for the bankers. So let's look at money. Money is just an interference factor between what you need and what you're able to get. People think in terms of wanting to get a job, to get money, to fulfill their needs. But if they really thought about it, it is really not the money that people need, but the access to the necessities of life. The use of money results in social stratification and elitism. They say in America that all people are equal, but most people don't buy the kind of car or the home they want. They buy what they can afford. Most people are slaves to jobs that, do not, that they do not like because they need the money. Many laws are enacted for the benefit of corporations that have the money to lobby, bribe, and persuade government officials to make laws to serve their own interests. People say that the monetary system produces incentive, but this may be true to a limited er in limited areas but it also produces greed, corruption, poverty, and unnecessary human suffering. We really have to look at the entire picture. The monetary system is based on artificial scarcity. For example, food products are sometimes destroyed just to keep prices up. There's a tremendous waste of resources as a result of frequent superficial design changes in order to create continuous markets. This is very evident in the fashion industry. This system is based on the need for continuous buying. You and I are merely consumers. But one of the greatest wastes of resources and lives is the military. How shameful that it is one of the biggest industries in the world. The earth is being plundered for profit. It is little understood just how much our values are shaped by our monetary systems. Our values are influenced by the establishment they create this, the value system within the society for their own self-interest, and they perpetuate the illusion that our values are created from the ground up with such notions as patriotism and democracy and freedom. Most important, when the corporation's bottom line is profit all decisions are made not for the benefit of people or the, or the environment, but for the, but for the acquisition of wealth, property, and power. For instance, if your country really cared about you, they wouldn't outsource jobs for lower wages elsewhere. Another example is that industry takes very good care of its production machines, but it doesn't take very good care of, it, of the labor. What if all the money in the world suddenly disappeared? As long as arable land, factories, technical personnel, and other resources existed, we can build anything we choose to build. 